Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio, and I hope you're well today. We're going to do a sermon on Satan's lies, ah, the lure of this world, uh, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, everything that kind of comes out of Hollywood, what comes in the, uh, in the media, what comes on social uh, social networks and so forth like that is that lure. There's that lure. There's these lies that come about. And as a result, we have come up with whole industries to uh, counteract our, our belief in these lies that if if you go out and party, then you don't have, uh, that's where true life is. You get high, you get drunk, you get this and you get that and all of a sudden now you're addicted and you have a problem because now you have an STD all of a sudden you have a problem because you're uh, you're 16 years old and you're pregnant you have a problem because you've you've blown your marital vows and you're 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 heading to divorce court and all these things are happening because we believe Satan's lies the deceptions of this world and make no mistake about it this idea of spiritual wickedness in high places there's there are demonic influences in Hollywood demonic influences in our school systems demonic influences uh, in our political systems demonic influences in the social networking there's the, the uh, feeding into our flesh because we war after this flesh right and so we're lured away and there's so so we Instead of uh, uh, changing our, our 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 trajectory of where we're going or direction, and uh, we we come up with whole industries like Alcoholics Anonymous, which is a, a great organization for what it is, and uh, we try to help people uh, rid themselves of that of that addiction that caused them to fall. We think of the rehabs that are out there for drugs and so forth, and Again, to minimize uh, the effects, or maybe to stop the effects of the lies that were that that someone once believed. We think about those uh, those smokeless cigarettes, those vaping, those uh, nicotine patches, and that because some teenager um, uh, got caught up in the, uh, thinking it was cool, or or they saw the commercials, or whatever else they saw. A, an idol doing these things so they got caught up in it and now they became addicted and they're trying to get away from it you think about the a whole abortion clinics and plan plan b pills that are murdering babies because people refuse to to keep sex within the confines of marriage and so you know all the lies that satan promotes that idea that that he promises freedom but in true, he ens he enslaves. He enslaves. He promises pleasure, but ultimately it brings brokenness, doesn't it? He promises life, but ultimately it brings death. And so we want to look at Luke chapter 15, one of the great chapters in the Bible, the idea of the prodigal son, someone who believed Satan's lies, who went after the lure of this world. He's going to take what uh, what was his father's and and um, and it would have been eventually his inheritance, and he's going to waste it in a life of of, of, of meaningless things until he finally comes to his senses. Luke chapter fifteen it says, and he says a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father. Father, give me a, the portion of goods that befalleth me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there he and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent it all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would faint and have fallen his filled his belly with the husk of, that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough 
and, and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And I will go, I will rise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy servant or thy son. Make me as one as thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But while he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. And the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, is my, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Luke 15, 11 through 24. What we find here is that Satan's temptations are so are, are so devious, aren't they? That idea it's so luring and so tempting, it's so it feeds our flesh. I remember as a young man, and I remember seeing in those days they had the rat pack and you saw the casinos and uh, and so forth, you know, uh, Dean Martin and and, and 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 of that ilk, and they look so cool in those tuxedos and, and so forth. And I remember as a, a young man being tempted by that, and I thought to myself that when I leave my father's house, I'm going to go and make my fortune in, uh, in Vegas. And then, uh, but God had different plans, didn't he? he? I got saved when I was a when I was a teenager, and I, uh, you know, I never had a desire to go out there and and get in those casinos uh, any longer. But uh, that idea that that lifestyle was so tempting, it it, it could have lured me away. And uh, you know, the prodigal was, I believe, uh, fascinated with the Vegas of his day. He was tired of working for the old man. He he wanted something better for himself. He wanted to go have fun with all his friends. He believed the lies that were out there. He, he, was, he wanted his money and he wanted his fun and he wanted it now. And I dare say that's what so many young people are seeing today. They see all this social media out there. They see all those people going to these parties and they think that that is life and they're being lured into the that meaningless uh, uh, parade of, of nonsense that are, is being put before them. They believe the, lie, the hype. They believe the lies of Satan. And uh, the advertisements look so good. And uh, the women are, are so good looking. And all he needed, this man believed, all he needed was his father's money. Just give me my inheritance now. It's going to be mine anyway. I can't, I'm not going to wait around till you die to get what is mine. I want it now. Boy, that must have been so insulting to the father. And like many people today, you know, they just think they're smarter than their parents. And uh, certainly smarter than his, his brother you know, who continued to work for his father. He wanted uh, a shortcut. He wanted the easy way out. He wanted the good life. All he thought about was today and not worrying about the future. And we see that among people today. The devil is always, always has some easy ways to get by without work. Some way to make a living by just being smarter than everyone else. He says you can sell drugs and you can sell your body or you can you can steal from someone. You can you can do a number of things rather than putting in the effort that that so many people have to do that I do, that I'm sure you do, in order to put food on the table. The prodigal didn't want to wait for his father to die. He wanted his inheritance now. Give it to me now. I want to experience life while I'm young. The product, prodigal wanted what he wanted when he wanted it. And here, 
you know, here at this home, I can do what I want to do. And so I want what is mine and I want to get as far away from you and your influence in this town as I can. I need my money so I can split and do what I want to do. It's that idea of being lured away. And then we see that temptation throughout Scripture. We see that temptation in the garden, don't we? We see it when uh, when Satan tempted Eve, right? It says in Genesis 3, 2 through 5, And the woman said unto the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not you shall sure you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will shall be opened, and and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know what, oh, Satan always questions God's word. He questions um, God's goodness. He defies his, uh, he defies God's word. He denies God's word. He promises what he cannot possibly fulfill. He minimizes the consequences of, def uh, of failing God. Ah, this is dangerous ground, young people. It's dangerous ground. I, I want to encourage you to look around you. Maybe look at some of your relatives. Look at some of your neighbors. Look at some of your friends you went to schools with, school with. And look at, with, at their lives. Consider the choices that they've made. And I want you to look in the mirror and say to yourself, you're no different. You're no special than anyone else. That those consequences will be your consequences if you follow Satan's ways. And so what we see here is that the prodigal went into a far country. And he wasted his substance on riotous living. And he spent it all. He wasn't thinking about tomorrow. He was partying. He was having a good time. He had all the friends and, 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 and fun that he could possibly want. But eventually the money runs out. And eventually hard times come. A famine comes into the land. And then he has to do what is so despicable for, for Jewish people. And that is to, he had, the only job he could find was that of feeding the swine, feeding the pigs, which is an abhorrent uh, animal among the Jewish uh, peoples. Ah, you know, the fruit of the devil sure does taste good uh, at first. It seems fun. It seems exciting. It seems like it'll never end. But there's always, there's always a price to be paid. It's like that that um, that fisherman who puts a, a worm at the end of a hook, and it looks so enticing to the fish, and he says, ah, that's what, exactly what I've been waiting for, and he bites into it, and then he's hooked, and the fisherman reels him in, and that's what Satan does. He, he just baits the hook with the things that will tempt you, the things that will destroy you. He will put it out there, whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's lying, whether it's stealing, whatever it is, he knows what your proclivities are. And there is a, always a hook. There's always a hook at the end of the line. You're, no, you're not special. That's why we have a proliferation of uh, of sexually transmitted diseases. That's why we have uh, so many people that are hooked on drugs. That's why we have so many people hooked on alcohol. That's why we have so many people that uh, can't keep a job. The prodigal believed Satan's lies and ended up in the pig pen. Oh, Satan's lies led to his, his uh, destruction, didn't it? We find that Satan is a liar. That's what the Bible tells me, tell, tells us. And I look at Hollywood and I wonder about those uh, like Rock Hudson and Freddie Mercury. I wonder what it was uh, when they finally discovered that Satan was lying about homosexuality. I wonder exactly when 
John Belushi or Janis Joplin or Jimi Hendrix finally figured out that uh, Satan had lied to him about those drugs and, and so many uh, uh, so many lives that were uh, destroyed because the, of, of Satan's lies. And you know what? The prodigal had found himself not at the, at the bottom of the barrel. He had no money. He had cut off uh, relations with his father. And he was, all he had to look forward to was spending time with pigs. Spending time with pigs. His friends were gone, his money was gone, his home was gone, his power was gone, his food was gone, and, and, and all he had were, were those pigs. You know what? If we're not careful, we end up with the pigs too. We end up with the pigs too. We see in Proverbs 5, 3 through 5, where it talks about the lips of a strange woman drop as honeycomb. He says, ah, oh, her enticement, and I say this is for the men too, you know, they're, they know how to speak to you. Their kisses are sweet. They allure with their arms, and they, they look so pretty, and they make so many promises. But the, uh, the proverb goes on to say, But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to, to death. Her steps take hold of hell. Satan says, Ha! Huh? He puts that lure out there. He puts that woman at the end of the hook, and you bite into her, and he's got you hooked. There is, you're going to lose your family. You're going to lose uh, your more your your testimony before the world. You're going to lose. You're going to lose every time. Proverbs fourteen twelve through fourteen says, "There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there, thereof are the ways of death." Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and in the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. He says, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. There is a way that this world says you should go. Oh, there is so much laughter in those bars. There is so much fun in those strip clubs. There is so much excitement in those new relationships, that person flirting with us, they make us feel good. Doesn't God want me to be happy? Why would God want me to stay, uh, be miserable in my marriage? There's so much excitement in that new relationship, and I don't have to wait for marriage because she's promised me or he's promised me that he loves me and we'll get married someday. The lure of Satan. But the Bible promises, and it says, uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto, unto a man, but the end thereof of those ways are death. Proverbs 23, 31 through 33, it says, Look not upon the wine while it is red, when it goeth into the, uh, which giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. It, and it lasteth, and the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an, an adder. He's saying that you and I need to be careful what we allow before our eyes. He says, don't even look at that wine. Don't even look at that woman. Don't look at that, that, uh, that, 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 that person outside of my marriage. Don't even consider it because we can be lured away. All it takes is one drink, and maybe you have the disposition that you can become uh, you become an alcoholic, or you uh, you don't know where your tolerance level is, and you have a DUI, and you hurt somebody, or you hurt someone else, or whatever else. And I know that upsets people. I get some I get some trolls online, and they say, yeah, you know what? The Bible doesn't say this, and the Bible doesn't say that, and the Bible doesn't say that. You know what? And they want to justify defying God, but they'll pay the price. The devil's a liar. He makes promises that he can't fulfill. He sets out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will steal your youth. He will destroy your life. His sins will kill you. And so you, like that prodigal, may find yourself, maybe you find yourself today in that pigsty. And maybe at this point you have a choice to make. Are you going to stay where you are? Are you going to 
Are you going to repent of your sins? That that prodigal did something right in his life. He he repented. He began to look around him and 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 discerning where his where his lifestyle had his choices had led him at the bottom of the by, uh, bottom. And he says, I will rise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. He says, I, I'm not even going to, uh, I'm not even going to try to make my place back into the, in, into my father's family. I just want to serve. I'll be there. I'll do what my fathers do. I'll do it for no money now. I did it before so I could get my inheritance, but I'll do it for free. Just so I have a roof over my head and I have food in my belly and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be better treated than this world has ever treated me. You know what I have found? In life, we all make mistakes. We all suffer. We all do things that we shouldn't do. But we all have a choice, and some people want to justify their choices. They want to blame God for where they are in life. They refuse to take ownership of their of their decisions. And so they stay in that pigsty. They stay at the bottom of the barrel, and they keep doing what they've always done. They continually um, bring misery upon themselves. And let me tell you today, that does not have to be your future. You can repent and give your life to Jesus Christ and your life will be changed. But the choice is yours. But so many people stay in the same mess that they're in. And I love this passage and it says, But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Who's who ran to who? The father ran to the son. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, thy, and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto the servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring him hither the fat, fatted calf and kill him. And let us eat and make merry, for my son was dead and is now uh, is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they, made, and they began to be merry. He says, you know what, son? You're not going to be a servant. You're going to have your rightful place in my family. I'm going to bring the robe, and I'm going to put the ring on your hand, and I'm going to show everybody that my son, who was dead, is now alive. He was lost, and now he's found. And maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you've made some tough choices in your life and you've wandered away from home and you believe the lies of what the world has to say and you thought this lifestyle, this, these choices were, uh, were, were fun and exciting and, 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 and would bring lasting joy in your life. But you found yourself. And you, you've come to yourself like that prodigal did. And you, you've come to your senses and you say, I don't want to live this way anymore. I know this, this lifestyle, this sin choices are going to lead to my death. What can I do? My friends, you repent of your sins. And you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. My Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is to be, is to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you want to have everlasting life, my friends, you must first repent and then receive. Repent and receive. Why don't you bow your head and say, Dear Father, I am so sorry for all that I've done. I've lived in sin and desire not to live this way anymore. Please forgive me of my sins and make me yours. I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for my sins. He paid my sin debt. I Please come into my life and save me now. Save me forever. Make me eternally yours. In Jesus' name I pray.
Amen. 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 Well, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying, God loves you and I love you as well. Hey, share this video with someone else and uh, maybe make their day. God bless you.